distance, the Iditarod, which is 1,049 miles, I would have 16 dogs on the line. So a little more than double than what I'm going to have today. And then the two directly in front of the sled, or the four-wheeler, is actually going to be called the wheel dogs. Those guys are the strongest dogs of the team. And their job is to help take the front end of the sled out and around quarters, as well as if we get stuck in any kind of fluffy snow, it's their job to kind of help me jostle the sled loose and be able to get through that, that tough situation. Now with the four-wheeler, you can see there's actually no engine in it whatsoever. So everything you see today is going to be 100% dog power since I really love the dog car by Eddie, right? And these, this team is looking really excited to go. So I'm going to take off and I'll call you out there on the trail. Okay. It's a shame they're not eager to do this, isn't it? Look at that. Everybody leans in, picks up speed, and Katrina is gone. But keep looking to the left, in between the two cabins, behind the dog pit, because she's going to do a big U-turn, and then come from our right to our left. And you'll see her on the monitor, too. We're going to keep her on camera for you. As the lead dog set the pace, and the rest of the team falls in behind with that nice, even spacing. All the dogs back here, of course, are freaking out. Pick me, I want to go! But don't worry, because every dog exercises every day at Trailbreaker, which is why they're so healthy and why they live so long. Granite lived to be 17 and a half, ran over 41,000 miles in his career, and his descendants get the same great care. Now keep looking to the left still, in between those same two cabins, but focus on that trail way far away from us at the base of the tall spruce trees. Use your monitors if that helps, or listen for the radio here. Here we are coming out of the trees on the far side of the lake, and this team is really flying. Now we're going at about 15 miles an hour, which is more of a sprint run. If we were going, you know, a mid-distance or a long-distance race, we would slow them down to a good 8 to 10 miles an hour so that they have a nice little trot and that they can pace themselves. But since today is a nice short run, we decided just to, you know, let's go out and have fun and let's go fast. So that's what we're doing. Now, just like with every kind of dog run, we are looking at the dogs more than the actual trail. We're looking at their body language as well as their tug lines. Now, their tug lines are the line that comes off the back of the harness, and that's where all the pulling power is going into. And I can see they're all nice and tight, so they're not just working hard, they're working hard and together as a team. I gotta give these guys a left hand command coming up, so I'll call you on the way back. Okay, haw command. Remember, all voice steering. There's no reins or lines, so you got to shout out what you want. G for right, haw for left, hike or all right, get some started, and then to stop them, you say whoa, and then you just kind of pray, actually. Because they don't like that command very much. You're going to see when they get back. Now watch the same faraway trail, because she's done a U-turn, and is going to start making her way back. Again, the monitors will will have a look they for you. They took that turn perfectly. And now we're on our way back, still on the far side of the lake. Now, this is really where you can see the athleticism of, a, of the Alaskan Husky. They leave a little bit of power in reserve, just like any kind of distance athlete. And they kind of kick it into high gear right here. So we're going a little bit faster now, because they know they're on the home stretch. And we want to pass any team in front of us and keep them behind us. And that's really how you win races. But these guys are looking excited. Next place you'll see that's where she's going to come back in. And I'll bet they're still making good time, so I hope that wool command works or they're just going to end up in the river. We'll see here. Oh, oh breaks. Oh. All right, nicely done, Katrina. Good Another job. great run. Thank you, everyone. But honestly, it's the dogs that deserve all of the praise. And no matter how long or how short the run was, we always go up and down the line and give a scratch behind the ears, give every dog a nice pat on the head to tell them that they did a good job. And of course, after a day in the heat, everybody likes to go for a swim. Yeah. After track practice, we all get in the pool. Almost looks refreshing, except I'm not, 38 degree water is a bit much for me, but... I'm not jumping in. No. <laughs> now, as you were on your way back, I was mentioning we get to look forward to meeting you and some of your crew here. You'll be bringing dogs to the village, which of course is always delightful. And then that statue of granite, which is a great photo spot. But the statue is not the only way he's been immortalized, because there's also the book about him that Susan and David wrote. 
And I'm hoping that if anybody decides they'd maybe like one of those to remember this experience, would you be able to maybe stand in for the family, take some questions, and even write a little note inside maybe? Absolutely. The story of Granite has been one that has really inspired me even to this day. It's really taught me that uh, no matter what anybody says, so long as you truly believe in what you are doing and believe in yourself and work with your team, you can really achieve what seems impossible. And I'm honored enough to be able to continue Susan's legacy as well as run Granite Descendants in all of these races. So if any of you would like a personalized copy for yourself, your kids, your grandkids, or even a public library, I'd love to personalize it for you guys and stamp it with Granite's paw print. Outstanding. Well, we'll certainly look forward to that then. And in the meantime, Katrina, on behalf of all of us out here, thanks for sharing Susan's backyard with us again. Thank you for coming by, everyone. We'll see you downstream. <laughs>